What's up, YouTube? Joe Bishy here, back from the dead. It's been a while, I know, I'm sorry. But I've got something new and interesting to maybe excite the world of YouTube and Path of Exile. So check this out. I'm on Path of Building. I've been working on this build for a long time now. Um, ever since I started playing the beta uh, a few weeks ago, I've been kind of working this together seeing how it feels just to make sure everything is right for when the time comes for when 3.0 comes I'm gonna have this character ready alright so what is it obviously it's a ranger it's a pathfinder okay it's basically the same character I ran in legacy league the main difference if we take a look at the ascendancy uh, I'm not poisoning anything just never ever again it's garbage now so what I'm doing is I'm taking these two Ascendancy points and I'm popping them straight into Veteran Boar. I'm going to get into that later. Um, as you can see, the tree looks very familiar. It sure does. Really, the only difference in this tree is that uh, we're not taking any minion damage because the Scourge isn't as good as it used to be. And we are unfortunately forced... To drop a lot of movement speed for crit so that's the difference we're scaling crit now uh, elemental damage spell damage physical damage okay there's there's a lot going on with blade vortex it's really easy to get a lot of damage on that ability still mind over matter with these three mana and life nodes next to the witch area it becomes super efficient the character is incredibly tanky if I can direct your attention to this little uh, info box on the left, you can check out some stats. I'm going to hover my cursor to kind of give you um, a direction to look. Okay, so we're not going to look at the DPS right now, just the defensives. Uh, 4,600 life, which is really good for a lab farmer, and 2,100 mana. Perfect. We're using mind over matter. Keep that in mind. So you can pretty much take all the life that you, or uh, sorry, all the mana you have, and add it to your total life. Okay, that's pretty good. Six thousand six hundred effective life pool essentially. Now, if you toss that in to the mix with an almost ninety percent chance to evade, you're almost unkillable. Okay, so um, I guess I'll. Uh, I guess I'll show the damage off before I go to the gear and I'll explain why the damage is this high afterwards. Okay, so this is um, this is about what the damage should be on the boss. And I got that number on this configuration. We're getting power charges from a shield called... Um, sorry, I'm unprepared and I forgot the name. Something jaw, right? Something jaw. Jaw, uh, uh, sorry, jaws of agony. So before the fight starts, you'll swap this shield on, toss out some traps, and boom, you get to start the fight with uh, full power charges. Okay, so that's why I have these ticked. Normally I wouldn't. Okay, normally I'd be conservative and not worry about power charges in the calculation. Um, is the enemy blinded? Yes. Okay, we're using a Stib Knight flask, so that's going to increase the evasion chance. Okay. Without this, look, evasion chance goes way down to 78%. Okay, but you want to keep it on because Zaro is going to be blinded. And shock, here's another big one. A lot of people wouldn't consider this, but um, I have it ticked, and I'll tell you why when I get to the gear and gems. Okay, so those are the settings uh, to the items really quickly. Um, you can pretty much see these. I'm not really going to go into too much detail about them because I want to get to the gems quickly. Divinaris, um, a pretty good spell shield. Uh, you want spell damage and crit. High life is great. Rat's Nest, you don't need this. This would be kind of great for like l late game, like min-maxing damage. You could just use a rare helmet. It doesn't matter. Or you can go back to the Devotos. That's fine too. It's all good. Queen of the Forest Body Armor. Here's a piece I need to talk about. Okay. Our gems for Blade Vortex are five blue one green you might be able to do two green four blue or one green one red four blue okay it's very difficult to get the colors on a queen of the forest that you need 
So what you can do is at the start of the league, you can buy a carcass jack. Okay, so this is an energy shield evasion base, which means you can pretty much uh, take a handful of chromatics and get the colors you need on a six socket carcass jack. Easy peasy. It's a very good chest. It's got all the stats you need, extra damage, life resistances. It's all there. Great chest. However, you can still use the tabula. I tested it. It's all good. It doesn't have to be plus one gems. You can still swap it on. Okay, that's the key word. Swap it on. So you need to have a queen of the forest, but when you get to the boss, you need to swap on a proper chest piece for damage. If you can't afford to get the right colors on queen of the forest. All right, the rest of the gear is pretty simple. Gloves, you can use a rare pair of gloves. You can use uh, Malagaro's gloves for extra damage if you feel like you can afford it. Uh, I'm sticking with rare gloves for the start of the league. Just for the extra defense, it sometimes is hard to cap resistances and get the life you need to be viable. Boots at series step, I probably wouldn't take any other boots. These are insane. Okay, you want these. They should be like 10 chaos, maybe 15 at the start of the league. Okay, try to get them cheap. Amulet, this is probably one of the better amulets I've ever seen for this build. Okay, mana regen's nice. The important things to look for, spell damage, life. Evasion's a bonus. Resistances are nice. You know, it is what it is. Essence Worm, another key piece of gear. Um, once I cover the skill gems, I'll talk more about the Essence Worm. Obviously, the ring is nothing special. The belt's nothing special. And then the flasks. Okay, this is the same flask setup as last league. Jade, Stib Knight, Quicksilver. All for insane movement speed coupled with the Queen of the Forest. Instead of a Vinktar, this league we are running at Ceres Promise, okay? You don't need a Vinktar. I know that this one is a legacy Vinktar. The values are not going to be the same in 3.0, but it's okay. On beta, I tested it. It's really fine. Once you have enough damage, this flask, you're not going to notice a difference, okay? You're going to be leeching up to full health in no time. Hybrid flask, got to have it. You can't do a normal health flask, can't do a normal mana flask. You need this right here, okay? Uh, for jewels, these jewels were imported from my previous character, so they are not min-maxed. I would highly recommend having life percent on each jewel. Uh, evasion helps. However, I would probably suggest damage instead. Scaling spell damage before anything else. Clear mind. Incredibly important. Try to get the best roll you can. It's between 50 and 60 spell damage. Uh, don't worry too much about mana regen. Get the highest spell damage roll you can get and put that sucker in there immediately. So yeah, the uh, rare jewels, not too important. Try to get life, evasion. Um, yeah. Okay, so on to the skills. Okay, here's where it gets really cool. I kind of went crazy on this a little bit, so it's pretty specific to my needs, okay? In the helmet... I guess it could be any four link technically, right? But this is the setup. Rally and Cry, really, really strong. A little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra mana regen. You could swap it out for Enduring Cry for uh, uh, endurance charges and the extra duration on a mortal call when it does proc. Very strong four link to have. Okay, in your chest piece, this is what I was talking about. Okay, do you see all those off colors? Hard to get, right? Uh, so... Going back to the configuration where I talked about shocking an enemy, okay, you need to do enough lightning damage to shock an enemy. Okay, and we're doing that by adding the uh, lightning gem in here and critting. Okay, so it's huge, huge, huge lightning damage. Okay, do you see this? In this column right here, the lightning damage column, almost up to 15,000 lightning damage. Okay, it's pretty big. Now, what you can do is if you're still not shocking the boss on this setup, you can add a physical to lightning gem in here at the cost of critical strikes. Okay, so now there's no way you won't shock the boss. Okay, it really depends on your gear, your weapon, your shield, you know, how much damage your character has. Okay, so th those are the two things. Let me put this back. Two things you can change to make sure you shock the boss 100%. Very important. Okay, on your gloves, four link, orb of storm setup, 
uh, this is a new thing that I, I thought of. Okay, Orb of Storms, Arcane Surge, and then Power Charges to sustain them so you don't have to pop that shield on it halfway through the fight. Okay, Arcane Surge is huge. Uh, you might not want to put this to level 20. There might be a happy medium between somewhere around like 10 and 15 where the mana cost you have to spend um, isn't too high. Because with a higher level Arcane Surge, you need to spend more mana to benefit from the damage and uh, cast speed buffs. Okay, so there's that. Um, here's another one. You know, most people would do Shield Charge, Fortify, Faster Attacks, and call it a day. Since we're running Mind Over Matter, we can't afford to Blasphemy a Curse. So we need a way to put it on the enemy. Some people would do Orb of Storms, but since Arcane Surge is in the game now, I've opted to do that instead. And for Shield Charge, we are now dropping faster attacks and cursing on hit uh, Warlord's Mark. And this is kind of good because it incentivizes Fortify. Uh, you're kind of knocking out two birds with one stone, right? Applying Fortify to yourself and Warlord's Mark to the enemy, so you get Endurance Charges and Leech. Very strong. Okay, so now to the essence worm. Okay, here is what I wanted to talk about. Some people would run the grace gem in an essence worm. A level 20 grace in an essence worm for the plus two levels and lots more movement speed. Okay, so here's the thing. Movement speed doesn't matter on boss fights. Also, evasion has diminishing returns past a certain amount okay so when you put grace on and your evasion is somewhere around 75 percent you gain like two percent evasion from a level 22 grace so that's not really worth it to have on a boss fight when you could have something like hatred okay this gives almost a hundred thousand dps in this gear in this simulation okay huge huge amounts of damage it obviously scales your physical damage and turns it into cold damage, which is perfect for the Pathfinder, which increases 40% elemental damage with a flask active. Big things here. Hatred is important for damage. Okay, so moving on to the weapons. Here's another one. Um, there's two sets of weapons. They're both equally important. You have one set for killing the boss, which we're looking at right now. Weapon 1 and Weapon 2. Um, the Divinaris is going to have a flame dash with a calling strike in it. It's pretty good for the last phase. Sometimes you won't use it, but if you time it properly, it'll save you a few seconds. So I like it. Also, it's good for um, maneuvering maps and uh, traversing large gaps. Pretty good. So in the offhand, I've chosen to go for a decoy totem. Some people disagree with this. But when you're trying to consistently farm Uberlab, it's important that you do not lose keys. You need to be able to use the decoy totem efficiently when you're fighting uh, mechanics such as uh, gargoyles or um, you know commanders, essences, anything that will leave its pedestal and enter the arena, you need to distract. If it jumps into your um, blade vortex and you accidentally kill it you're gonna have a bad time okay also uh, after you kill a Zaro and he's still dancing around waiting for his mechanics to kind of finish off you can just drop the decoy totem stand on the other side of the room and you know slash dance it's pretty handy uh, if you're a creative person you'll find many uses for it I know I have okay so the runner gear um, the runner weapon okay you can't see it but in air quotes I'm saying runner okay this is important because I'll show you uh, real quick let me divert your attention to this movement speed modifier down here at 253 percent okay now when I swap weapons 379 which for some reason is on the low end uh, anyhow what you're gonna want in your weapon Flame Dash. Sorry, in your Ichimanji. What you're going to want in your Ichimanji is a Flame Dash faster casting Grace setup. Okay? And after you've killed a Zaro, you want to put on Grace again. 
because it will give you 44% movement speed. It's absolutely huge. You're going to want that. So this is what I was talking about. You want to toggle this off for the boss so that way you have a full mana pool. And after you kill the boss, you can toggle it back on because you're not going to be taking as much damage while you're running. Also, in your offhand shield, you're going to want a phase run, increased duration, faster casting setup. Pretty standard. This is just going to increase your movement speed. Again, 50%. Pretty big. And your shield is going to look something like this. The highest evasion shield you can get. It's okay to sacrifice other stats to get evasion here. It really helps out. Okay, so I think I've covered basically everything I needed to. Again, this is the lab character I will be starting with. This is the lab character I put a lot of effort into min-maxing. Um, it was developed to farm Uber Lab properly. It's not a rank 1 character. It will not beat any land speed records. Not at all. It's designed, again, to just farm the Labyrinth, get all the keys. With the changes made to Labyrinth in 3.0, I feel like it will be more than worth it to rush through the lab and actually do the side rooms, actually do the puzzles, get all the treasure keys from all the curious lockboxes, and open up all the chests at the end. And I think the best way to do that is by running fast. Alright, so there's that. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I will try my best to get to everything. Uh, as usual, I will be streaming 3.0 if you're interested in seeing my progression or how I do uh, later on once the character is geared. Please feel free to drop by. I will be glad to have you in the chat. Alright, so everybody have a great day and see you next time.